Look at that. Coming back out in the 51, struggling it's for got warm up the tyres. Fantastic stuff. Three cars battling for third place. 50 Ferrari with warm tyres takes the advantage. The 38 Jota car gets in front of the 51 car. And the 38 car pitting a lap earlier. So the overcut actually hurt the 51 car that time. They benefited last time. This time their rivals on cleaner tyres. Big lockup from the Corvette. Nico Veroni has been passed and left by Casper Stevenson. He's been passed by Michael Wainwright in the GR race, or Stevenson's gone by Wainwright. And that looked like Julian Andlauer oh, dive bombing. This is how it happened. Oh. I wondered why suddenly he was under so much threat. He just absolutely locked up the Costa into that final corner. And the 51's problem, by the way, was a slow pit stop, slower pit stop. It's yeah. 129. Even Ferrari. slower? Wow, yeah. 129. Wow. That's cost them two places on track. They were third, they're now fifth. And Nick Nielsen, the car came in in fifth in the hands of Antonio Fuoco, now up to third. Now then, back with our AM um, battle. Here is Dempsey Proton's Julian Andlauer. Factory pro driver from Porsche, very, very quick. Closing down Nico Veroni. Veroni has been passed by Casper Stevenson and Alex Ramirez and Northwest AMR Aston Martin has driven away from him as well. So the question is, has Nico Veroni forgotten how to drive or is he on a Ben style? Are they trying to do what they did in Fuji, which was save an entire fuel stop? Well, don't forget, Ben did a short stop part way through the race. If they can save half a stint, they could have a big advantage at the end. Nick Nielsen, Antonio Felix da Costa, four third. De Costa will be really pleased with having dropped the car off the road and given those spots away, won't he? He'll be kicking his own... Yeah, patting because, himself firmly on the back. Yeah. Because he would have finally found his way past the car 51. He is in front of the 51. Yeah. Unfortunately, the other Ferrari's overtaken him yeah. and he's staring at the back of another one. So, uh, yeah, that was such a... Uh, such a costly mistake at that point in the race for De Costa. It wasn't a massive lockup, so the tyre will be okay in terms of vibration, but this Ferrari has proven so impossibly hard to overtake for the Jota car all race long. And on top of that, he's on, on our graphics anyway, at least, slightly older tyres. That, that looks like a qualifying yeah. set on the Jota car, where it's brand new on Nick Nielsen's car. Potentially, apart from the front right of Nick Yeah, that's a, a yeah. qualifier, you're right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so De Costa, right, what can you do here? A little bit of traffic might help you through 12, but uh, Nielsen's going to dive down the inside. Oh, a bit of contact, That's even. Mike Wainwright. He's going to be starting to get a bit of a complex about <laughs> yeah. hypercar drivers hitting him after contact with Brendan Hartley in the number here eight. We go. So here comes Antonio Felix De Costa looking around the outside on the filthy part of the track. Does he get in part, Anthony? What a move. What a move. It's not over yet because on the exit, Ferrari's going to get a clean one here, and it's not over because it's going to carry on down towards turn one. The Ferrari is a bit faster in straight line. De Costa's going to go to the inside to defend it. That pushes the Ferrari onto the racing line. The better braking zone for him is who dares break latest. It's Nielsen into turn one. Brilliant stuff oh, between these two. And he comes to an absolute grinding haul there. He had to rotate the car, and here comes Antonio Felix De Costa. Does he have a shout into turn four now? He does. But uh, as we saw, the Ferrari's quick in the straight line. That's where it's making its lap time up. I knew De Costa would be under a bit of threat. He had to try into the final corner. He might not get another chance. He's going to try turn eight again. Look how close he is as they come through four and five, six and seven down the hill. He did everything absolutely right there, De Costa, and kept his nose in there when he was almost pushed off the circuit. I was watching that, and the stewards would have been as well. But uh, Nielsen played it, he played it fair, but right to the edge. Nick Nielsen, never a hypercar champion yet. He has been an LMP2 champion. Sara Bovey in the garage with Louise Beckett in the inset watching the action, waiting for a chat, but waiting for things to be just a fraction less mental <laughs> on track before we jump in there. But it's this kind of action we were looking forward to as this hypercar class exploded in numbers deep already it's going to get chasm like uh, next year 
with many, many more cars. So what can you do, Antonio Felix da Costa, on in a car that seems to have the speed, you're using a little bit more energy than Ferrari, but they've got the straight line advantage on a track where straight line speed is so crucially important when you're in a fighting situation. If you can just get in front, we'll see him pull away. But uh, yeah, here's that moment as they headed down the main straight. Oh, no, sorry, this is down to the final. What is this, turn one? Okay. Turn one, right? yeah. Turn one, yeah. He had no choice, but I think to take the line that he did. I think otherwise he would have been passed. He was close this time as well, yeah. but didn't quite think to do it. And he's focusing on the exit of turn closer. two. That's nice. Closer. He's got a good run this time. Actually, he's closer to this lap than he was that before. And that forces Nielsen to the inside. That was a brilliant move, but not quite. Not enough. No, it oh, was because yes. he braked too late. Nielsen. Forced him into the mistake. Makes a mistake. Breaks too late. Through goes Antonio Felix to Costa. Sara Bovi, go and have a shower. Louise will still be there when yeah. you get back because no one's taking their eyes off this for a moment. And that was the part of the circuit he needed to overtake him because through all this twisty stuff, he can start to make progress now. Finally, we see Hertz Team Jota in front of Ferrari, both yeah. Ferraris in now, this race today. Hertz Team Jota up to third overall for the first time without it being pit stops.